Uh, when we came to office, uh, we were advised very early on coming to office that Snowy 2.0 was a deeply troubled project. It was running late and none of this had been made public. AEMO hadn't been told, the states and territories hadn't been told and most importantly the Australian people hadn't been told just how troubled the project was. We made it public uh, and we made it transparent. And uh, when it was when the government was advised earlier this year that the project was further delayed and uh, wouldn't be delivering power until 2028 or 2029, we made it public immediately. And we also announced that we had asked the new chief executive, Dennis Barnes, to conduct a project reset and review. The day before yesterday, Minister Gallagher and I, as the two shareholding ministers, received that reset and review and the Snowy Hydro corporate plan. And that's being released today publicly. Uh, in the normal transparent way in which this government deals with challenges, unlike the previous government. In short, uh, this finds that the cost is now $12 billion, uh, that full power can now be expected in December 2028, which is earlier than previously indicated, and we certainly hope that's the case, uh, and that an extra 200 megawatts can be expected over and above the two gigawatts that had previously been indicated. Uh, now, the $12 billion uh, cost is obviously very, very substantial. And there are a couple of things at play here. Firstly, this is one of the most engineering, one, one of the most complex engineering projects underway anywhere in the world. Uh, and it is subject to the same constraints and blowouts that all major infrastructure projects around the world are experiencing. That's just a fact. And we recognise that, whether it be COVID-19 or the supply chain constraints which are following COVID-19. Uh, these are impacts on every project around the world, and we acknowledge that and we accept that. Uh, the clear advice to government, though, is also that things could have and should have been done better much earlier in the project's development. For example, design immaturity at financial investment decision stage, i.e. not enough proper work and due diligence was done early to identify the risks and costs. That is the very clear advice to government from Snowy. Uh, for example, it's well known that the tunnel boring machine Florence has been stuck because the soil is very soft. That should have and could have been known at the time. There should have been more work done, more testing, more due diligence uh, at the time. Uh, that needs to be acknowledged and is acknowledged by this government. Uh, the reset has also identified improvements uh, in the contract arrangements, which should have been in place earlier and now will be put in place. The contractual challenges include capping prices in an environment with escalating costs, operational problems including financial viability of some of the contractors, safety issues and environmental breaches which should have been avoided. Uh, under the Snowy 2 reset, uh, there will be a new model of working with the venture partners under the leadership of Dennis Barnes, the new chief executive. It will reward performing on budget and on time amongst the joint venture partners and will punish or penalise a poor performance over budget and over time. That's as it should be. That's a contract reset. That contract negotiation is well underway. I welcome the leadership brought by the new chief executive to this task. Uh, he is uh, certainly making good progress. Uh, if the contract is not reset, the very clear advice to me and to Minister Gallagher is that the project will take longer, even longer, and will cost even more than the $12 billion. Uh, that is not acceptable to the government, so we support the new steps being put in place by the new uh, management of Snowy 2.0 to put this important project back on track. It is an important project. It still has a net uh, present value of $3 billion. And Mr Westerman himself said this morning it was an important project for the grid going forward. So we stand by the project. We said from opposition, even though it was a Liberal government initiative, that it was an important project. It remains an important project. It has not been well delivered up until now. I want to make clear that is not the fault of the thousands of workers on site whom I've met when I've visited. Uh, they're doing a good job in dif difficult circumstances. It is not the fault of current management. They are cleaning up a very difficult situation uh, and they have our full support as, we, as they do so. We'll continue to focus on delivery and unlike the previous government, we'll be open and upfront and transparent as we are today. Receive this report the day before yesterday, open and out now to the public for all to see unlike the previous government, which knew it was running late and deliberately hid it from the Australian people.